In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, as you and I gather here today, we stand in the presence of an unconditionally loving God, a God who is love, and that was paid for us with a great ransom, a tremendous price so that we might be able, with eyes of faith and hearts of love, to see Christ, to see God, and to see the power of the Holy Spirit in one another and in ourselves. For the days that we have conditioned our love or our willingness to embrace others, let us ask for peace and mercy from God above. You came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, Strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Eli Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, After murdering, do you also take possession? For this, the Lord says, in the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered, because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight. I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line whether slave or free man, in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like that of Basha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel too, the Lord declared, the dogs shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable, abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness, in the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sins cleanse me. 
Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes the sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. I've started my uh, summer by taking an opportunity to grow a small plot of vegetables. Some tomatoes, about six or seven plants, and some curly kale, lettuce of two different types, and eggplant, and some plant that I'm not quite sure what it is. Nothing's bloomed yet, or if it's blooming it hasn't started to produce fruit that's discernible, but it's an odd plant, and I thought maybe it was a bell pepper, maybe even a banana pepper plant. I don't know yet. But one thing I do know, and it's become a meditation for me to pick up and weed some of the, the spaces around these vegetables, to make sure that um, the tomatoes are tied up properly, to keep looking for the telltale signs of any uh, rabbits who might come around looking for my lettuce as a snack. But the meditation piece also extends into watering each one of these plants. Giving equal measure of water and attention, and when necessary, a little shake of plant food to each one of them. And thinking about how God does that same thing to each and every one of us. He's allowing us the opportunity to grow by dousing us, if you would, with the same love the same amount of sunshine or rain, the same amount of heat, even some weeds that grow at our feet, asking perhaps maybe we tend the garden around us or help tend the garden of a neighbor or a family member. And in American society, that doesn't seem right. We don't know what that weird one plant is going to be. Maybe it's going to be a weed. Maybe it'll be hot peppers, and maybe you don't like hot peppers. So why should we allow that one to grow? It might cause pain. True, but it won't cause pain if you don't eat it. Or perhaps it's going to be something altogether different. We think, though, because God somehow gives equal portion to that particular plant in this garden, in this world of ours, that we get less. And we begin to begrudge that plant. We don't know what it's going to become. It looks suspicious. Maybe we should segregate it a little bit farther down the line so that it doesn't infect all the rest of the plants or take too much of the nutrient from the good producing plants. And all of a sudden we become discriminatory and we become the misers, squeezing out what we believe should be 
God's gift to us, the good and upright people, not those who have a checkered past or an uncertain future. For Jesus Christ, the sun rises and sets on the just and the unjust. The rain, too, falls on the good and the bad. In other words, no one is beyond the reach of God's mercy and love, even those who choose to reject it and those who choose to squeeze it out. Selfish, first-world citizens of this beautiful nation who have almost every opportunity imaginable to them believe that somehow, at some point, another child born in another zip code or down the street or across the country or in another country is going to take something away from us. Now, does that say more about God or does that say more about us? I think it says more about us. And how we can take the devil's cue and operate out of fear and establish division and somehow put a box or a parameter around God. How dare we? Because to be a follower of Jesus, we too must strive to love indiscriminately. Not just those who make us feel good. Not, who, not those who just look like us or talk like us or live in our own zip code, or have a similar bank account, or greater. Because we know that if we were ever in trouble, those who have more than us would certainly give to us, wouldn't they? Or would they? Because they might be in the same peril that we're in, if we don't listen to the words of Jesus Christ. What the word of God say to, to Ahab? If you don't mend your ways, bub, this is not going to go well for you and for your progeny. Dogs and birds are going to lick up your blood because of the way you've lived. It's a warning to Ahab and to us. We want Naboth's vineyard. We want Naboth to be gone. We want to be able to make that produce and make that product and that profit off of Naboth's death. Ooh, Nelly. Hang on if you think that that's the way this life was meant to be for us or anyone else. In doing so, we reject the goodness of God. But in following him and striving to love indiscriminately, without looking at the differences, and with also counting the costs, We need to grow in the imitation of Jesus Christ if we expect at some point this world might be more just or the world that is to come might have a place for us. Be like that Jesus who prayed with his last breath for his persecutors, for his enemies, those for who are different from him and treated him the very way that we always seem to want to treat others. Because if we hit them hard first, they can't hit back. Pretty soon, an eye for an eye leaves a lot of people blinded in this world. Each of us comes to the Lord imperfect, liable to sin and temptation, sick and in need of healing, poor in spirit and poor in pocket. But the good news is that Jesus loves each and every one of us, loves us far too much to allow us to stay where we are, and inviting us to be better better than we were yesterday, better than we are today, and even better tomorrow in attitude, in thought, in disposition, in hopes, in faith. We come needing that divine physician into this world, and he heals us if we let him. No one is beyond the reach of God's mercy and love. He lets the sun and the rain fall on the good and the bad, and you and me. Let us pray that not only will we receive God's mercy, but share God's mercy in our daily lives. As for the church and all of its believers, and for those who find it today difficult to believe, may the Holy Spirit always be a guide and beckon each and every child of God homeward. Let us pray to the Lord. For our civil and religious leaders here in this country and all over the world, may God speak wisdom into them so that their hearts and their hands might just treat the world kindly, as Jesus did for Nicodemus, as was granted to Ahab. 
let us pray to the Lord. For those who are trapped in bondage of spirit or physical domination, may life in the Spirit lead them to freedom and redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community gathered together, may God inspire us in our life of community, prayer, and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, particularly those that have been part of our communities, those whose anniversaries we observe, and for those who have succumbed to the ailments of the human body, particularly those that currently do not have treatments, cancer, diseases of the muscular system, coronavirus. Let us ask that the merciful God might bring them close to his heart this day in his loving embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. For your prayers in mind that we bear in silence, that we together lift up in this moment of offering. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of all goodness, we ask that you listen to our prayers and answer them according to your will, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels and saints, as in joyful celebration we acclaim together. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, let us dare now to pray together in the words that Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you now and stay with you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go forward to love and serve the Lord and one another.